Hi, uh, welcome again from the SE for All Forum, hashtag SE for All Forum, um, uh, here in the Dougal Greenhouse in Brooklyn, New York. New York. And uh, I'm really, I'm Rachel Kite, I'm the CEO of Sustainable Energy for All, and I'm really delighted to be joined by one of the leading lights of the uh, movement to uh, get uh, Sustainable Energy for All or Sustainable Energy to Poor People. This is uh, Suleiman Jassi al Habesh, who is the head of OFID. And for those of you who don't know what OFID is, it's the OPEC Fund for International Development, headquartered in a beautiful palace in Vienna, um, from where uh, he, has done, he has led pioneering work to get financing out there to try to close the energy access gap. So uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us, for being in Brooklyn. Um, you're deeply committed to sustainable development. Now, what's the role that you've been playing to support implementation of the sustainable development goal on energy? And what, why is that so important to you? Well, uh, first of all, good morning, Rashid. Thank you very it's much. Nice it's a pleasure you. to be with you. Uh, you know, I, I would like to, uh, if you don't mind, to connect with... Uh, uh, beautiful introduction you made yesterday. You quoted the preamble of the United Nations. Uh, yeah, you have your copy. Wait, of the I have my copy. Today. This is given to me by my professor Butros Ghali in 1964. Wow. And uh, you quoted the preamble which say we, we the people of the United Nations, determined to save the future generations. So actually, this is really very much appealing to us because most of our work is really towards these future generations who are going to suffer from uh, the lack of impl impl implementation of this sustainable development goal. Actually, uh, in, in, the, in the charter, as you know, um, I am always interested to quote chapter 9. Chapter 9 is about what we are trying to do. It's, yeah. actually, it's actually the main content of the SDGs. It's the standard of living, employment. But as you know, chapter 9 is overshadowed by chapter 7, so people don't really put pay that much attention as well. Anyway, uh, from the United Nations cha uh, Charter to, uh, to, let's go to MDGs. MDGs, as you know, they have eight goals, but for some unknown reason, there was no, no nothing about energy. Yeah. So they are addressing all uh, aspects of poverty except energy. So that's why it was really uh, 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 much, uh, we were much delighted when, when we were asked by the, those who are preparing for the third summit of OPEC to give them something on energy and sustainable development. And that's what we did. We prepared something and it is actually uh, uh, taken by the summit as chapter, at, uh, point number, number six, okay. which actually called on us, called on us, yeah, we are going by the book which called on us to look for ways and means of the eradication of energy poverty. Not even alleviation, eradication. So we took it as part of our mandate and we started working on that. Side. In 2008 we had uh, the first uh, workshop in Abuja, Nigeria on that subject. I think it's the first uh, symposium or the first uh, workshop to deal with eradication of energy poverty. We had all stakeholders. We have even the oil industries, ExxonMobil, Schlumberger, and uh, and uh, and uh, and Chevron, we came out. You know, the whole um, workshop took like two days, and we came out with the conclusion, which I'm sure everybody knows, that sub-Saharan problem with the energy is uh, something that the market has failed to solve it. So we need a global. We took it from there, and then we started, you know, uh, negotiating with our ministerial council, with our countries. We got the one billion dollars in in uh, 2011 and we start implementing now then we come to uh, to uh, to uh, goal number seven yeah. goal number seven as you know is the missing we call it uh, the missing ninth goal of the mdgs and we're delighted when mr ban ki moon the former secretary general came out with with his energy for all and put me in the in the oh, high level so yeah, not, yeah. And we took it from there. So we are actually, in, in, in one way since now, we are uh, talking to many people here, uh, sustainable development for us is a journey, not a destination. And we are delighted to work with organizations like you. But you, you, I mean, you are becoming a, a very critical piece of the puzzle because you're investing and making funding available 
to entrepreneurs and to uh, those who need it. So what are some of the very specific activities that you're engaged in? Because I know that you're engaged with other companies and other initiatives in order to see more work go forward more quickly to close that energy poverty yeah. gap. You know, when the United Nations General Assembly approved the, the, the SA for All, yeah. that was in September 2012, then, uh, um, you know, these people, they start talking about, okay, let's now, let's start to find solution. Then I remember my first intervention, I said, you are talking about trying to find solution. We are funding solutions, actually. We are. That's, that's exactly what we're doing. We started actually building alliances with different uh, stakeholders. We have an, uh, an uh, joint forces with Shell Foundation with R uh, in Brussels, with, yeah. uh, with many, many organizations. We are dealing with these small solutions because we know, the, you know, going, waiting for the, for the main grids and the big services, you know, we need time, we need, you know, trillions of dollars. We don't have them at the moment. But, you know, we were happy that uh, we provided, for example, solar lanterns for students in Africa, for Tanzania, Kenya, and many, many other countries. We did that in Bangladesh and India and many, many places. So, uh, yes, we are uh, working with the like-minded people, and we are leading among the 10 Arab institutions. We are the leaders, actually. They assigned us to do the job. That's wonderful. Yeah. So, look, I, I have to ask you another, another question, building on that, which is that you know, you're a... You are a very important part of the OPEC family, right? Ah, yeah. So these are the oil producers. You're, the, you're their fund for international development. So when you look to the future, what, what do you see as the shift in the energy mix? And, and what's the role for fossil fuels in this energy transition that everybody's talking about? Okay, very good. Very good. Can I, can I start with a point of clarification? You know, because our name is OPEC Fund for International Development, OFID, okay? So people, when, they, when, when we start talking about uh, fossil fuel oil and renewable, they think that we are trying to defend a market share. The fact, the fact, and this is the numbers of the IA, oil has lost, as you know that, of course, oil has lost its share in the power generation from, if you look at 1973, the share was 23%, now it is less than 4%. So we're not really defending the market share, no, no, no. We are trying to give the public and the audience the right signal, you know. Okay, we believe in renewables, we are investing in renewables. You know, most of our, if I sign, for example, in a year, seven or ten agreement on, on, on energy for the poor, uh, at least three or four of them uh, devoted for, for renewables. We work with that, and, and even our member country is doing that. But you see, we look at renewables at this point of time as the incremental source of energy, as it is reported by, for example, uh, British Petroleum Statistical uh, uh, Bulletin and this thing. But then I know we will probably reach a time, I don't know it is going to be when I'm, uh, we are around, or, but we, we will reach a time when fossil fuel is going to be the incremental, you know. But this is need time, need uh, investment, and need understanding. Just don't give people, uh, uh, like I said, wrong, uh, wrong signal. I mean, give them yeah. that information. But I think uh, fossil fuel, oil, and renewable are needed. And when it comes to our partner, the poor countries, we put in a declaration which we announced in SA for, uh, on uh, Rio Plus 20, we said that developing countries cannot wait until we invent something we call it clean or modern. They need any source of energy, anything superior to animal waste and wood is needed by these developing countries. And we are providing them, we're working on that basis. So I think what's uh, really exciting is that since 2012, obviously the cost of clean energy has come even further down, and as Mike Liebrich from Bloomberg was saying yesterday. So uh, I want to thank you for your leadership. Thank you for being there with funds, um, uh, investing in the future, uh, investing in the future where all poor people will have an opportunity because they have access to sustainable energy. So thank you for joining us on Facebook Live and um, the best of luck to offer. Thank okay, you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.